This video will cover multiplying complex numbers, and that actually comes in form of four types of problems. We have problems where we multiply two imaginary numbers, such as our first example here. Problems where we multiply two roots with negative radicands, or one with a negative and one without a negative, so two roots, one of which or more of one of which might have a negative. And then two other types of problems that we'll see on the next page. So. When we multiply negative 6i times 2i, we treat the i like a variable. What I mean by that is, we treat this like it says negative 6x times 2x, which means we're going to multiply the coefficients and add the exponents. So similarly, negative 6 times 2 would be negative 12, i times i would be i squared. So our first step is to turn that into negative 12i squared. Now we would be done there, except i squared is not a variable. i squared, from the previous videos, is equal to negative 1. So what we do is we substitute a negative 1 in for i squared. So we have negative 12 times negative 1, and we multiply those together, giving us a final answer of 12. Pause the video and try examples a and b at the bottom. I will start those solutions shortly after I finish this sentence. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. i times i is i squared. i squared is equal to negative 1. Negative 24 times negative 1 gives us an answer of positive 24. 5i times 10i would be 50 i squared. i squared is equal to negative 1. 50 times negative 1 is negative 50. On to multiplying two square roots. Now we might have two negative radicands, we might have one negative radicand. It doesn't change our approach. We take each negative out of the root and turn it into an i. So our first step is to rewrite the problem as i root 12 times i root 2. Then just like we did on the previous examples, we treat these like variables and we multiply them. Now when we multiply i times i, we get i squared. And when we multiply the square root of 12 times the square root of 2, we get the square root of 24. Now this is the only problem type where we do not have to remember a plus or minus because the i's themselves tell us the sign of the root. So i squared is negative 1. And the square root of 24, well that reduces to uh, 2 root 6. So then we would multiply negative 1 times 2 to get negative 2 root 6. Pause the video and try examples C and D. I will start them shortly after I finish this sentence. We take the i out of each root, giving us i root 10 times i root 15. Then we multiply those together, giving us i squared times the square root of 150. We feed 150 to the calculator and we replace i squared with negative 1. Root 150 is 25 times 6, meaning it reduces to 5 root 6. Negative 1 times 5 would give us an answer of negative 5 root 6. Same deal, we take the i's out of the roots, i root 3 times i root 24. Then we multiply, that would be i squared root 72 i squared is negative 1, root 72 is 6 root 2. Negative 1 times 6 would be negative 6 root 2. That is how we multiply two imaginary numbers. Now, we could also have an imaginary number times a complex number. We still treat i like a variable. So what we do just like if this said 11x times 5 minus 2x, when we see a problem like that, we should instinctively want to distribute. That is exactly what we do here. We distribute 11i. So 11i times 5 is 55i. 11i times negative 2i is negative 22i squared. And just like on the last problem, we would be done there, except i squared is not a variable i squared is equivalent to negative 1. So we're going to plug in a negative 1 for the i squared in that problem. 
So that would be 55i minus 22 times negative 1, or 55i plus 22. Now, we're done, except complex numbers have to be written in the form a plus bi, period. There's no exception to that rule. So this is backwards, and we have to write our answer as 22 plus 55i. If you forget, your answer will be marked wrong, as it is not in proper notation. Pause the video and try example A. Okay, so on example A, we are going to distribute the negative 4i. That would be negative 12i minus 8i squared. Then we replace the i squared with negative 1. So negative 12i plus 8, which we would then have to rewrite as 8 minus 12i. That's how we multiply an imaginary number times a complex number. That is also the same method we would use if we were multiplying a real number times a complex number we would distribute. So the last thing we need to talk about is what we do when we multiply two complex numbers, like in example two up here at the top. Um, this is exactly like multiplying two binomials. We need to FOIL. Now, if you're not familiar with the term FOIL, it is called a lot of other things. It's also called double distribution. Um, you can also use what's known as the area method to carry out this multiplication. So I'm going to show um, the area method as well as foiling. So the area method calls for a 2 by 2 box because they're both binomials with one of these written across the top, 3 minus 6i, and the other one written down the side, 1 plus 4i. Then we go in and we multiply length times width in each box. So that would be 12i, and this would be negative 24i squared. Essentially, that's just foiling for you, because what we do when we foil is we make sure that 3 multiplies both numbers. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 4i is 12i. And we make sure that negative 6 multiplies both numbers. Negative 6i times 1 is negative 6i and negative 6i times 4i is negative 24i squared. So if you notice, those four terms in our product are the same four terms in the four boxes of the area method. So it doesn't matter to me which one of these methods you prefer to use. I can grade any of them. It's perfectly fine. Now at this point, we could combine like terms, but we might as well wait, because the other thing we have to deal with is i squared. i squared is negative 1. So we need to plug in a negative 1. So 3 plus 12i minus 6i, we leave all of that alone, and we plug in a negative 1 for i squared. That would be 3 plus 12i minus 6i, we're still leaving all of that alone, plus 24. And then we combine our like terms. So we have two sets of like terms. 3 plus 24 is 27. 12 minus 6 would be 6i. So our answer would be 27 plus 6i. Pause the video and try example B. I will start doing that example shortly after I finish this sentence. Okay, so we need to make sure that 2 multiplies both things. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. 2 times negative 2i is negative 4i. We also need to make sure that 3i multiplies both things. 3i times negative 6 is negative 18i. 3i times negative 2i is negative 6i squared. We then go in and replace the i squared with a negative 1, which would turn this into negative 12 minus 4i minus 18i plus 6. Then we combine like terms. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. Negative 4i minus 18i is negative 22i. So our answer should be negative 6 minus 22i. That does it for this video. We have a short video to follow on addition and subtraction of complex numbers.